Firstly, thanks for joining me today. Whilst you're here, we'd go batshit if you'd check out our other cartoons. Can't tell you what we'd do if you're subscribed. Anyway, on to the tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to rig Harry Potter's face in roughly 10 minutes, including animatable lips, lip sync, <laughs> eyebrows and eyelids. Start to finish, strap yourself in, we're not stopping for snacks. So this is what we're making today. This character is taken from an upcoming project, which you can find out more about on Casting Call Club here if you wish. Harry actually doesn't star much in this video, so his head isn't overly complicated. We've got some hidden bones on the face, controlled by these control bones. We've also got these two bones driving time offset modifiers for the expression and mouth shapes. So how do we do it? So the first thing you'll need to do is draw the actual character. It's important that you start by drawing the character's rest pose on frame 0. You'll notice my rest pose is on frame 1 because I'm demonstrating with Blender 2.9. Newer versions will need to be animated on 0. We'll be using the time offsets to animate our character's keys later, so we need to make sure that we separate any features we want onto their own layers or group of layers. For our rig, we need keys for our eye expressions and mouth shapes to select when animating, so let's draw some eyebrows. I'll activate onion skin and fade layers to better see what I'm doing here. Moving the animation forward by one frame at a time, I'll draw each eyebrow key and slightly adjust my eye shapes where required. Eyebrows and eyelids are important elements to an expressive cartoon, so we give our character a selection of shapes as you can see on the chart. Once I'm happy with these shapes, I go back to my rest pose and start drawing the mouth shapes on the mouth layer. We know what emotions our character will be expressing in our cartoon, so we'll only draw the necessary mouth shapes. Here we have 14 slightly negative frames, as that's all we need for our animation. For reappearing characters we would usually have significantly more frames to select from. Now we can add the mechanism to allow us to select our separate keys. This is by the magic of time offset modifiers. Ensure you're in object mode and go to the modifier properties tab and add modifier time offset. Set your time offset to fixed frame. The other modes allow looping of animation while we just want to select one frame. Change the name to something meaningful. Using the layer field we can set the limit of effect to one layer. We can also exclude a layer, or if we leave it blank, apply to all layers. We'll need to create a time offset for each of the layers we want to animate with our expression controller. So I'll add another modifier for our eye shape and eye fill layers. As we want to animate the expressions together, we can copy our eyebrow frame number to the offsets down the chain by opening the offset and right clicking, selecting copy as new driver. Go to the modifier down chain and paste the driver. The field will turn purple to show it's a driven field. Drivers are as they sound, their value is driven by something else. By playing with our master offset frame, we can see both our aspects animate together. I'm quickly adding any other offsets I need for this expression control, and then come to the mouth controller. By leaving our final offset layer field blank, it will affect all layers we haven't currently applied a modifier to. So for us, this will drive our face and mouth shapes. Try to use this blank field to drive the element that affects the most layers of your animation, so you don't have to create as many time offsets. If we play with the frame value on the mouth keys, we'll see the mouth animates correctly. We now need to create a rig to control these frames when animating. Use Shift A to open the Add menu and add an armature, renaming as you do. I like to have an upside down root bone at the bottom of the character that I can move my entire rig with. I use Shift A whilst in edit mode to add additional bones. We'll add two here, but you can add as many as you would need. We'll have one control for our expression keys and one for our mouth shapes. We'll call these mouth controller and eyebrow controller. Tab out of edit mode and return to your time offset. Selecting the master eyebrow offset, right click frame, new driver. We'll come back to expression in a moment. Change the type to transform channel. Select your armor to name and object and eyebrow controller as the bone. We now need to work out what axis our control bone is transforming on. If you lock the bone to an axis, you can see what axis the bone is transforming on in the top corner. I know world Z will be transform Y in this instance from experience. Yours may transform in a different orientation, so do play with this. I'll set the type to Y location in transform space and test the sensitivity. Once I'm happy, I'll copy the driver and paste it into the mouth offset. Our other offsets will already follow our eyebrow frame, so we don't need to touch them. Edit the driver and change the driver bone to mouth controller. The controller is reacting slowly here, so I'll adjust the sensitivity. I'll do this by increasing the expression value. This value is dependent on the scale of your armature and your sensitivity preferences. 
Use var, star, and then a value to adjust how far you have to move the control bar to affect the frame number. And that's the basis of our face rigs that you can use for some basic animation. But we'll crank on and add some more expressive controls and features. Let's start by controlling our pupils. Add a pupil control bone on the left, and a pupil bone between Harry's eyes. Our illegal aliens characters tend to have independent pupil controls. We won't require this for this animation, so we'll just be using the one bone to control both. Parent your character's head to the armature by shift selecting your character's face, followed by the armature and using control P. Parent with empty groups. If we select our character now, we can see all our bones have been added to our vertex groups. We'll delete all of these and just keep the pupils for now. These groups bind vertexes, or individual drawing points, to the bone of the same name. In edit mode, select the points we want to be controlled and assign them to the vertex group. Give it a test, and if it all works, we now need to assign the pupil bone to the control bone. Select the pupil bone and add a copy transforms constraint. Set the target as your armature, and the bone as your pupil controller. We mix using after original. Set the space to local space for both transforms and test. Here we can see we have two issues, the eyes are too sensitive and they overlap the face. We can adjust the sensitivity by reducing the constraint's influence. Much better. Now we need to set up a mask on the layer so the eyes don't overlap the face. I'll do this in the layers tab and mask my pupil layer with the eye fill layer. I'm now looking to polish the rig a bit more by using some proportional editing to adjust my jawline for each mouth pose. I'll also start adding our expressive eyelids. Using fade layers again, I'll draw the rest pose of my eyelids, and then duplicate and adjust each frame shape to match the eyebrow expression. Returning to the rig, I'll add an additional six bones, three for controls and three for deforms for our eyebrows, top eyelids and bottom eyelid positions. I'll apply copy constraints for all these bones in the same manner as I did with the pupil controls. To get this working, I'll finally also assign all the eyebrows and eyelids to their respective vertex groups. If we use control bones as they are here while animating, we'll get confused quite quickly what controls what. So I'll organise and change the bone appearance to something more graphic. I'll add a square, circle and semicircle plane which we can use to change the appearance in a moment. I'll also add a new bone to parent all my control bones to so they move as one. Once parented, I'll change the display in bone viewport display, selecting my square plane for the parent, semicircle for the eyelids, and the circle for my pupil controller. We'll change the timeline view, activate automatic keying, and Harry's pretty much finished. There's an extra couple of finishing touches you could also do, such as adding constraints to prevent control bones from moving on the wrong axis. We also have a driver to enable us to activate and deactivate the mouth time set offsets. This is a really handy feature as we have our common mouths in our library, but sometimes we need something a little bit different and unique, such as impact frames or drinking frames for example. Now I can animate the segment you saw at the beginning of the video. I'll change a window to video sequencer and bring in the audio. I'll make sure my AV sync is on. That aligns the audio and the visual and keeps your video in sync. And also make sure I turn on audio scrubbing. That means I'll be able to hear the audio as I move forward and backwards a frame. To go back to the animation, I'll nudge forward one frame and adjust the mouth shape to match the sound in the audio scrubbing. I'll do this for each frame. That's all I have to show you for this episode. If you've enjoyed the video and learned anything, please give this video a like and subscribe for more content including these tutorials and cartoons. Cheers for now!